Hi YouTube, it's Lena, and I'm here today with the... God, what is it technically called? What would I buy with the thousand dollars at Sephora tag? I don't know, I have to look up exactly what the name is, but this was started by Emily Noel. She is an awesome YouTuber. If you somehow don't already follow her, you should definitely check her out. But the idea is you were given a thousand bucks that you could only spend at Sephora. So let's say you were given like a Sephora gift card. And what is the stuff that you are interested in but the price tag holds you back from buying? And I definitely went about this a slightly different way than most other people do is there's a couple of like little mini sets in here. But I love mini sets. Of course, if I was just given a Sephora gift card, I would buy some mini sets. That's what I do. So anyways, uh, to get started, uh, the thing that I wanted to spend the most money on and I got a lot of stuff on here. Like I saw some people with only like nine or 10 things and I have 17 items and I, I, I'm actually a hair shy of a thousand dollars. I am 995.50, but the thing that I spent the most money on and I'm going to have to insert pictures because I don't know how to do the whole nice showing it with me in the frame and all of that. I have yet to figure out how people do that and I wish I knew how. It is the Charlotte Tilbury The Rock Chick look set for $230. Which it's something that is technically on my wish list, but I don't think I would ever buy unless somebody gave me like a thousand dollars Sephora gift card. But the reason why I would buy it over some other things is that they do have multiple pieces in there from the line that I would be curious to try. Like it has one of their lipsticks, not Pillow Talk, which I do have on here actually, but they do have one of their lipsticks. They have a lip liner, which I love lip liners. I'm wearing one today, like I always am. They have an eyeshadow quad, one of their like boob looking blushes. I don't remember the name of it. And I want to think there's like an eyeliner or something in there too. I can't quite remember, but it's a lot of stuff. So, and their line is very expensive. They're honestly one of the few luxury lines that I can pick from because I'm trying to go cruelty free, which means stuff like Dior, Chanel, all of those kind of brands. I'm not picking stuff from. I actually have several Charlotte Tilbury things on my list. The next thing I have on here is the Marc Jacobs Beauty, which by the way is different from the perfume because the perfume sells in China, but the beauty like cosmetics does not. Like I think two different people own the name Marc Jacobs. It's some weird thing, but I picked out one of their iconic multi-finish eyeshadow palettes in Provocateur. Now, I have a couple of palettes on here. I'm a palette fiend. I own way too many and um, I'm not really ashamed of it. But uh, this this is one of like the ones in the little sleek packaging. Uh, this was the color story that appealed most to me uh, from what they have at least because I like bright colors for the most part. I'm wearing something purpley today actually and this was a peaky purpley type palette if I remember correctly. It might lean more pink. I can't quite remember. But uh, next is a Deborah Lipman nail polish in Mermaid's Dream. And I'm talking the full size on this one. I had a mini in the past, but I actually used it up. So if I'm going to splurge on a $20 nail polish, that would be the only one I would ever splurge on. So, oh, uh, the Marc Jacobs was, I'm putting these down here as well, but the Marc Jacobs was $49.50, by the way. Next is actually a little skincare kit. It is the Pharmacy Farmer's Kit Farm Fresh Skincare Best Sellers for $45. I actually already have bought one of their little skin kit set sets recently. Just not this one because it was sold out at the time. But uh, they ha it's what especially caught my interest in this one because I do really like their skincare. They're just kind of expensive. But uh... They have like this cherry serum in it that I was like, ooh, I want to try that, but I don't want to buy a full size and be stuck using it for six months. And if I don't like it <laughs> or have to take it back because I hate returning things. 
Next is something that's not a huge expenditure, but hear me out on this one. It is the Whey Body Cream for $38. Now, I know when most people go to blow money on a body lotion, they go with the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Boom Boom, and I love that stuff, don't get me wrong. I buy their holiday kits every year so uh, that I stay pretty well stocked throughout the year without having to do the big splurge on the one $44 tub. Although if I ever completely ran out of lotion, that is what I would straight go buy. Like I would just drop the money on it, I don't care. And I would possibly drop the money on this too. I never see this one in kits though. Like I got it in a 500 point perk kit, but I don't know if Way does a whole lot of kits at the holidays like Sol de Janeiro does. So. Out of the two, this is the one that I would pick because I don't see it pop up in kids. I don't have a back stock of minis and whatnot, which I do now, of the way that is. So that was my decision making for that. Next is the Nest New York Perfume Collection for $40. It is a bunch of their little mini rollerballs. And I know most people hate rollerballs and I don't love them, but I don't mind them. I know they get all cloudy from like your skin flakes, but it's my skin flakes going on my skin, so doesn't bother me too bad. Um, finding cruelty-free perfumes is a bit of a hassle. Like there's some out there, uh, Pacifica makes some good ones actually, but most of them don't last on me very long. And my favorite body spray company that was cruelty-free, Zany Laney, went out of business. Thank, thank you, Beer Virus, for uh, ruining everything, including the little things. But, uh, so I'm, I think Nest is supposed to not test on animals or sell in China, so I figured they would be a good one to try a bunch of stuff from. I know there's one that I like, I think it's called Black Orchid or something like that. But hey, if I could find two or three that I like, even better. You know how that is. Next is something that is a brand that I've seen in all of these videos, Pat McGrath. Now I have two things on, from them on here. One, the first one is the Pat McGrath Labs Mini Eye Ecstasy Palette in Subversive for $28. Now, they put these out recently to probably like entice people in to buy their expensive ass eyeshadows. Like I know they're smaller than the normal ones and they don't have all the pretty packaging with them. They're literally like in a plastic case, I think. But out of the two that they have, they have a really neutral one and a colorful one. The colorful one was what obviously caught my eye because I have enough neutral shadows to last me a lifetime. Hell, I have enough colorful shadows to last me a lifetime. But if I'm buying palettes at this point, it's got to be honestly a freaking rainbow palette more often than not just to even catch my interest. So out of the two of the little ones that they have, that is the one that I would buy. Next is a newer release also. It is the Urban Decay Naked Ultraviolet Palette. I haven't seen any, I haven't watched any of the reviews out there on this because, you know, I honestly to get, try to keep myself from buying too much new makeup. I don't watch a lot of new releases anymore. It hasn't really helped, honestly, but at the same time, there's probably a lot more out there that I would want if I kept up with it as like I used to, so I hope that it's enough. But this was a really pretty color story and I do like Urban Decay shadows, so with the card like this, I figured I would go for it. Next is from Fenty Beauty. It is their Low Fly Stun Up Mini Eye and Lip Set for $24. Now, The main thing that I was interested in here was the lip product, but I figured why not get a mini of it and get an eyeliner at the same time. Because that, that red lip, I love red lipsticks. I'm not wearing one today, but I do wear them fairly frequently. More so now that I'm panning an eyeshadow look that actually goes with red lipsticks. <sighs> but uh, yeah, that, that I've always wanted to try that particular lip product from her. So why not get a little kit? We got a couple of Charlotte Tilbury next. First is the Charlotte Tilbury Mini Pillow Talk Lipstick and Liner Set. I figure if I'm gonna get lip products, because I try to not buy lip products because I have so many, and they go bad quicker than say a powder. If I'm gonna buy some 
lip products. I'm going to buy the minis because there's, there's still a ton of product. And the Pillow Talk is the one that everybody talks about that's like a perfect nude for everybody and whatnot. So I've, it's one of those things I've always wanted to try, but I don't want to pay for just a straight up Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. But a mini with a pencil, I'll buy that. And next is the thing that everybody and their mother has talked about in the past. It's not as hyped now, but go to YouTube like two years ago and everybody was wanting this. The Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow Contour Duo. Now, do I need another bronzer and highlighter? No. Do I want the pretty expensive $68 one in the pretty packaging? Yes. And I will say that I'll, I've seen some people pan this. That's how it really came on my radar. Uh, apparently, these, these are a pain in the ass to hit pan on. <laughs> So as much as I don't want to pay $68 for a bronzer and highlighter duo, apparently you definitely get a lot of bang for your buck in it. So it's gotten me a little more curious. And of course, another thing that I've seen pop up in all these videos is the Natasha Denona palette. Now I didn't pick out the huge ones because none of their color stories really appealed to me in like every single shade but the $129 ones those were a little more up my alley and I wound up going with the Lila eyeshadow palette now I say this I own the mini Lila the $25 teeny tiny eyeshadow one that I've seen people try to hit pan on these and it takes forever so I'm not hating on the fact that these are tiny but I figured if I was going to splurge, it will use a card that was a gift to me and splurge on some stuff that I would never buy otherwise, I would pick up a Natasha Denona palette. And that was just the one with the cover story that I liked the most. So even though I own the mini, that is the one that I would pick up. Go figure. Uh, next is two foundations. The first one is one that I've raved about in the past because I always get the samples of it, but I haven't yet bought the full size because I always have too many foundations to kind of justify spending that much on one. It is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Moisturizer. Now, despite this being a glowy, not even full on foundation, it's a tinted moisturizer. It's very light coverage. For some reason, it works beautifully on my oily ass skin. <laughs> don't get it so go figure there but if I was given this card I would buy that in a heartbeat but it's something that I plan to buy eventually anyway like some of these are things I plan to buy eventually and some of these are like oh god I would never buy that <laughs> that's too expensive like the nail polish I will probably buy eventually because there's like nothing else like it on the market anymore uh, the Nest I will probably buy eventually, the Mini Pat McGrath I will probably buy eventually, the Fenty and the Charlotte Tilbury kits I will probably buy eventually. But a lot of these on here are also like, oh god, I would never pay for that, that's too much money. Uh, next is something that I'm very on the fence about paying for, it's another foundation. It is the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Stick. For $46. Now normally I go through a foundation stick in six weeks so I never want to pay a lot for them but I've heard that this is one where a couple of honestly a couple of swipes and you're done like swipe here swipe here for your forehead and maybe one for your neck. So I would look this is something I would really love to get a mini of to make sure that it actually works on my skin. I've heard it's good for oily skin but I, I just don't know. So if I could get a hold of a mini in my shade, and that's the problem because I've gotten like sample cards of this in the past and they never put out what would actually work for me. Like they're always damn near I can contour with the lightest shade. But they seem to have a shade that works for me. So next something that I might buy, but it's something that it is a replacement for the heavy metal glitters that I sometimes use in my hair. But it's something that's basically a glitter, but actually made for your body and your hair. It's the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Face and Body Glitter. The one I picked was in Soul Love for $22. Now, these are technically limited edition. I don't know if they're going to be there forever, but... These are not actually made to go in your hair. <laughs> like, I have to rip out the stopper 
and scoop out copious amounts of it. And I still do it anyway, because it's fun, but. And I do it with a clean spatula and all that, all that noise so that I'm not like cross contaminating between my hair and my eyes or anything like that. Like I make sure to do it as right as I can, but it's fun, especially like I did this a lot last year where I would put like, I would pull my hair up and, and do like glitter in my part. So, and so it's a fun way to use them up if you don't like them on your eyes. Anyways, uh, next is something that normally I am very against paying this much money for, but this was my favorite cleanser. Because I've always said, why would you pay more than like 15 bucks for a cleanser? Because most of it goes down the drain. And now I might be eating my words, because I do really love this facial cleanser. It is from Pharmacy, who seem to keep popping up in my favorite skincare stuff. It is the Clean and Be Ultra Gentle Facial Cleanser. It smells like honey. My face does look really good when I use it. <laughs> so, and maybe it actually does something. Like normally, when I buy like full-size cleansers myself, I tend to buy acne cleansers. And because I'm greasy, I break out, and they do help with that. Like, there's a Yada Cosmetics Bubble Tea Cleanser that I absolutely swear by for um, keeping down the breakouts if that's a cleanser that I'm buying. I haven't bought a cleanser in ages because I get minis from like Ipsy and stuff all the time, so I don't buy any. <laughs> but, so normally the Yada one, which is like $15, is what I would buy, but that pharmacy one was really good. I got a deluxe travel size, technically, from BoxyCharm ages ago, and I absolutely fell in love with it. And the full size is $28, and it's like, do I really want to pay almost $30 for a cleanser? I kind of do. But then I'd be eating my own words, and I don't know if I'm willing to do that. <laughs> so, that is something I might buy on my own, but definitely if I got like a gift card to Sephora, I would totally buy it. And finally, this is my second largest purchase. It is the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership one eyeshadow palette in subliminal for $125. Why are these palettes so damn expensive? Like, I know with uh, Charlotte Tilbury, they're impossible, not Charlotte Tilbury, uh, Natasha Denona, they're so like well pressed and usually huge. They're impossible to hit pan on. Is it the same way for Pat McGrath? I don't know. I've never even looked at one. Like in person, I've never seen one. But going through, again, like all of their palettes, like this is the one with the color story that appeals the most to me. Like for some reason, the cool tones in this one were really working for me, so, cause that's what I've been panning a lot of lately. So that's probably why. But that was the one that I was feeling at the time. So that was the one I picked. Now, that is it for me here. I feel like I've been talking forever and I kind of have, but thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I do really appreciate it. And hopefully I will see you later.